to me, honestly, he holds the keys to the kingdom, right? Yeah. So he should be in the most dangerous spots, to be honestly, a free license to go where he wants to find gaps, yeah. but basically in the middle of the field. And the, you know, Pineda has the right idea in that he, you have to have outside people to draw people away from Almada. Yeah. He just has the wrong guys doing it. And he has those guys doing it. And we're so vulnerable in the back. We don't need it. It should be, you know, his airplanes who are not only getting down the thing, but down the wings, but also opening it up for Almada. His yeah. airplane is Araujo. Now I would and never then, have let Moreno go because I would have had the book can be Moreno, but yeah. he's gone. But Moreno was an airplane. He's more of a skilled player, but he can go by people, but he kind of slowed down after he went by them with a quick burst. I would say Wiley's more of your other airplane, right? He's the only other guy who has pace to get. Now he's got to prove it. I mean, in terms of being able to go all 90, but to your point, he can definitely so, go for 30. I can also see, to be honest, I would be hoping that Wiley does such a good job. He forces my hand. Wiley becomes the left winger. Araujo goes inverted on the right, right wing. And you let that, you know, happen. Right. Um, and then, of course, Papa Giorgio up front. Right. And Papa Giorgio up front. Turning you over. <laughs> <laughs> Yakamakas. 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 Yeah. So there we go. There's our, our starting lineup. Let's recap. we got Braguzan in the back. Yep. Goalkeeper. We've got Parata, Miles Robinson, center backs, Gutman on the left, and Ronald Hernandez on the right. Sosa in front, leading as the defensive center midfielder. Yep. In front of him, we have Etienne and Almada. On the left, we have Araujo, Brooks, Lennon to start on the right as our airplanes. And then up front, we've got Papa Georgia. Yep. I would have picked the exact same starting lineup. So we are 100% aligned, which is kind of All annoying. All right. Look at <laughs> there. I, mean, well, I, yeah. I, I think I would, yeah, I agree. Like, Lennon is the the X factor, and, and whether you bring in Wiley and do some sort of creative thing, certainly in certain games, I think you should use that to your advantage. I'm right? not Where, such a big Jose Tu fan, so to me on the road – you would think about Ibarra coming in for Etienne if he really, I mean, we haven't seen Etienne. So yeah, I just, I we no don't idea. really know. I mean, if he's not as good a defensive player, then on the road, you might want to have Ibarra as a, you know, we've talked about Man United and Fred, who was brought in for Man United to be the defensive midfielder. He's an awful defensive midfielder, mm -hmm. right? Because he's all action. He gets in tackles. He wins balls all the time, but he also is rush of blood to the head. He's all over the freaking mm -hmm. place. He has no discipline, right? And he does crazy things. So in the end, it doesn't work because he makes four, five, six awesome plays and then gives up a goal, right? Mm -hmm. But when you play a real defensive midfielder like they have in Casemiro, and now in certain moments, you play Fred in front of him. Now you have two defensive midfielders who the front guy can be much more aggressive. You can really do damage. And to me, Ibarra looks like that. He's a little bit more aggressive. He's not as smart reading the game as, as Sosa is, but he's a good in the tackle. He wins the ball back. He's feisty. He gets in yeah. fights. You like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and on the road, playing Ibarra in front of Sosa as a destroyer works for me, or late in the game when you have yeah. a lead. I feel like when everything else is working around Ibarra and it's set up the way, he can really play well. Yeah. But when it's not, he makes silly mistakes and looks, looks out of place. But I think that's more about the thought of what's around him and setting him up for success and is on his own. But the key is, I mean, Pineda has the right idea, which is you've got to open up space for Almada and you have to have guys who can get in behind. Here's the problem though. We have our outside backs going forward and every MLS team has said to us, fine, give it to Lennon, give it to Goodman. As long as you don't give it to Almada, we're still not going to leave him. You give it to him. Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. Have time. You know, go fun. You know, go play. <laughs> right. And what are you going to do? You're crossing into nobody. Right. Yeah. And that's a problem because they just let them have it and it's not good enough to break anybody down. Well, especially when you don't throw the change up, which is called the early cross. Right. We never play the early cross anymore because we don't have that commitment for those guys to get in the box early, which. I'm really hoping Papa Giorgio can show that he can press the line forward, 
create the creative space for Amada maybe to pick it back up and make another beautiful pass or let Lennon bomb down and make an early cross. I mean, that's the type of movement I think we've got to see versus. I do think Yakamakis, when he's set up by Almada in these perfect situations, he's going to score. So more like you're thinking right down the center type of. Yeah, a little, little flip. Little, yeah, little, yeah. Set him through. But that all to me, it, it all depends on it's not Goodman and Lennon who you want breaking into this space. It's Araujo. The key to the whole thing is you have to be afraid of Araujo running in space. And the problem with Araujo right now in this system is he hangs back and he gets the ball at his feet. Now, that's okay because he can go buy a guy, but it's really good if he's running and we feed him. He's frightening. He is a frightening player. We couldn't find one opportunity, Dave, against Chattanooga to pass <laughs> the ball to Luis Araujo while he was on his front foot running into it. I know. Not once. Well, in fairness, he doesn't run that much. And and to me, that's coaching, right? You could be yeah. like, I would have been like, on him, on him, on him. You got to be. What I would say to Araujo is you get out on the wing. You don't need to defend very much. But be out on that space. So for somebody, so yeah. the defender has two options. He can either come out to you, right? If he comes out to you, you freaking take off behind him yeah. and say bye bye, yeah. right? And you try to get the ball served into you. If he doesn't come out to you, we're going to serve you all day as the open guy. And at least we have Araujo running at a defender rather than Brooks I mean, Lennon running at a defender. If, if you have Almada with a ball and his head is up and Araujo is running behind the back line at all. You don't think Almada can chip it over and right. play it right on a plate to him. Right. That's so, it should be so frightening or Almada is good enough to see that, that Araujo is going to check back to it after he's pressed the line up and do come back to it. And there's just so many things I'd be so excited about. Well, the thing team. that you have to do is you need your back four to be aggressive and up the field and winning balls. Right? So if you say Hernandez, Gutman, Miles Robinson, Parata, you say there that that back four has some strength. It's got some pace. Nobody's going to run behind them. They can get really far up the field and win balls. And your job is to win it, give it to Arusha, win it to give it to Almada, win it, give it to Etienne, right? And yeah. just recycle it and forget about being, we don't want you on the end of a run. Yeah. We mostly want you just winning balls at midfield. Yeah. Which Gutman and Hernandez can do because the day moment long. you have it marked up, you're going to see an absolutely brilliant Sosa because the only way you can beat Sosa is they have an easy outlet. There's nothing he can do about it. Yeah. As soon as you have it marked up, now Sosa can go hunting. Yeah. And when Sosa goes hunting, I don't know if you've been watching Casemiro <laughs> at Manchester United, but he's turning the ball over all the time. And if you have Ronald Hernandez behind Lennon. Lennon might start playing really well and I'll get off his back a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's just. Yeah. And, and honestly, if Lennon wasn't so far back, he's a better, def you have another defensive yeah. guy in front of Hernandez. And if he stays up where you use him as an outlet, now you might find that he actually serves an early ball because he's going to have all day to get his head up. Yeah. And I'm excited to see what Etienne's about too. I have no idea. He's an X factor in this season, I think. I yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, in a perfect world, he's a poor man's Nogby. Yeah. yeah. Um, where he can really keep the ball and just get it onto the next guy. I think he's a little bit more attacking than that and not as good in possession as that. But okay. so yeah, that leaves us with I mean, who's that to who's more ticky tacky in the middle? Like he doesn't play overly offensively he's not a great defender i don't see a huge role for him yeah, i don't but, see, uh, but honestly i don't Pineda see, thinks he's the defensive midfield i don't see a big role for his i don't see a big role obviously for a marcetic and no, we haven't even talked i'm about, about to it. say and he's gonna be the I, starter probably oh god no don't, don't even say that that's ridiculous it's just seriously ridiculous. he's gonna be the starter no he's not dave yes he is <laughs> <laughs> on opening you day. shut your mouth <laughs> <laughs> Abara, I still see upside. Yes. I